You ready? Yeah. Do you want one? Um, you know the law about offensive weapons? Uh, listen. I'm just going to show him what's happened to my stock. <laughs> well, I might do with this rubbish newspaper. What's been going on here, then? Now, that is just what we're about to find out. Thought you were on holiday. Yes, New Yorker, actually. I'm having a great time. Till I got a call from the office. What am I supposed to do about this? Do what you like. Don't you care? It's nothing to do with me anymore. See, they got your back, eh? Yes, one of the benefits of a partnership, eh? Leaving my wife on holiday. I, uh, I might know something about this, you know. What? I had this very strange conversation with Barry Grant last week. I knew he was up to something. Barry? Well, surely you don't think he knows something about it. But he said he'd get Jimmy out, didn't he? I said I'd get Jimmy out. Or maybe Barry took a shortcut. Are you implying that Barry started that fire in his own development? You can't go around making allegations like that. Well, who else did he? This place was an accident waiting to happen. All it needed was for Jimmy Corkill to drop a match. So how come the police say it was arson, then? And where's Barry? There you go. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you then. There you go. Hello. Can I go in your window? I'll see why not. I'm looking for extra staff, you know, someone local. Yeah. Do the evening shifts. Do you want it for a week or a fortnight? Oh, a week should do it. That'll be a pound, please. There you go. So. OK, thank you. Hello, up. Well, well, asked me to do the odd shift, you know, some committee business down the Legion. Do you reckon these are all right? Shouldn't be me buying you flowers. Not for me. For Anna. She's invited us to a party at Latin Patricia's. Oh, but they were away. Uh, they are. Just a few friends, you know. Mm. It's 2.50. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, hello, hello. How's the baby? Hi, uh, oh, she's great. She's 15 pounds now. Oh, it seems like ages since I've seen her. Everything all right? Yeah, fine. I'm just taking a round to my dad's when I've done a bit of shopping. Oh, I'll walk down with you. Have a good gossip. Yeah, <laughs> great. Oi, we want a word. Free country? What do you know about this? Do you know anything about the people who invited this new Britain mob? Yeah, I've seen it before. And actually, I'm a member. And it's a legal political party, not a mob. And you admit it? Just like that? Yeah, of course I admit it. No law against joining things. This is racist rubbish! That is just your opinion, which you are entitled to. That is politics in there. No worse than what's in your national press. This causes problems. Look what happened to Jimmy's shop. Are you accusing me? Because if you are, go to the police. Hang on. We're just trying to sort out what happened. Well, go to the police. That's what they're there for. Look, I believe in law and order. It's you that's causing trouble, not me. It was you lot that put those stickers all over our windows. A few hotheads. Every party attracts a few undesirables. Yeah. You can't blame George for what other people do, you know. Oh, George is it now? Look, uh, I was going to bring this over later, but seeing as you're here, you may as well have it now. I had a bit of a whip round, you know, help you make a fresh start after what happened to the shop. Oh, uh, all right, thanks. Oh, I don't believe this. Something upsetting your friend? Yeah, well, you can't altogether blame him. Anyway, thanks again. Um, aren't you forgetting something? Oh. We've got to do something about him across the road. He's just a minute he's a member of this mob. What mob? The New Britain Party, our local racist organisation. He's just said he's a member. Oh, so when are you going to be paying your subs, then? Oh, come on, Alex. He had a point. It is only politics. Only politics? Firebombs? Threats? Oh, drop it, Ellis. What's happened to the end shop? Well, there was a fire and some gas cylinders exploded. Looks a right mess. Yeah, and it wasn't an accident. How do you mean? Come on, I'll tell you on the way. So are you two off, then? Well, I'm taking him shopping, smartening up his image. What, you're buying his clothes? <laughs> That's letting the side down a bit, isn't it? Where's the money coming from? We're both skinned. Don't worry. I won't let him spend too much. Under the thumb or what? Must be love, Jimmy. So you and Derek all right? Yeah, great. I didn't think you two would make it, you know. We did that. 
good job we didn't listen to what other people said. I suppose you heard what happened. Well, I heard you had some problems and you wanted to like the gossiping. I feel terrible about it now, but I just couldn't cope. I just hope she never finds out. Oh, she looks all right to me. Yeah, and I feel a lot better now since I'm back at work and when we've got our own place. Oh, something me and Derry don't mind. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, can you see the baby? Well, she's just about to drop off, I think. I want to step. Oh, is she lovely? Yeah. She's four and a half months now. Is she? Hey, Pisa, don't you want to come and hold the baby? No, thanks. I'm not really the baby type. <laughs> Mick's right. You should forget about that web fella. What, and let him get away with it? You can't actually prove he did anything. If you just stay quiet, things will calm down. They always do. Yeah, but so you putting up with racism? It's not a question of putting up with it. It's how you handle it. Try to ignore it. This web guy, he knows it's getting to you and he's enjoying it. Yeah. I just find it difficult to lie down and take it. Come on, jacket next. Oh, you heard what Mick said about condoms. I'll pay for it. Count it as an engagement present. Well, that's for engagement. Does that mean I should be getting you a ring? Well, I won't hold my breath if you're economising. Good job I'm not marrying you for your money. I can't believe you're talking about getting married. You haven't even met my parents yet. I'd even do that. This weekend. What? Come to London with me this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Good God, what am I saying? My mum will get the family round. Well, this is getting seriously serious. Oh, well, that's the idea. Oh, yeah. Hi. No, I forgot to mention it earlier, but uh, don't sit on your own tonight. Uh, come to Anna's party with the rest of us. Oh, I don't think so. Thanks. But... Oh, come on, it's better than sitting on your own thinking miserable thoughts. You can enjoy a break. I know. I'd love to. What will everyone think? My husband walks out on me and I move the road to living it up at a party. So you're mourning then, are you? Look, it's nobody else's business. Sod what they think. You said yourself you've no intention of running back to Rod. While you're waiting for him to make a move, just get on with your own life. And enjoy yourself. Maybe I could pop over for an hour or so. What if Rod rings while I'm out? If he does, he'll ring again. <sighs> OK. But just for a while. I'll see you there, then. See you later. I never thought I'd be doing this. Shopping as a couple. First time for everything. I always thought it was our Mick you fancied, you know. Oh, no. You don't think this is a bit too, um... Macho? Mm. I think you look terrific. Oh. And a bit too, um... Don't worry about it. This one's on me. My grand will really go for you in this. How many people are you setting up for me? Well, as soon as my mum knows you're coming. My grand, my sister, my brother, my sister-in-law, and little Carmel. All of them? Try keeping them away. Mum, I know this is serious. Soon. Trying to get a skip delivered, arranging with builders to uh, put shuttering up. <laughs> also, I'm trying in vain to find Barry Grant. Seems the shops. Mm. Next time I go away, I must remind myself not to leave a contact number. All I want to do now is have a hot shower and dry myself in my own home this evening. You'll be lucky. Why? Why, well, it's nothing big, it's just um, a party. A party? Here? Well, what are you doing here? You know, if one more person says that... What's this I've heard about you having a party? Oh, uh, it's not exactly a party. No, it's not a party at all. It, it's just me and Derek. Oh, oh and uh, Peter Harrison and Mick from next door. And Mike and Jackie Dixon. Oh, no, I don't believe this. You haven't invited the Mini Clampets into my house, have you? Well, you, you said I could have a few friends. Right? Yeah, just a few, but not that lot from next door. I'm sorry. <sighs> Look, keep an eye on them, that's all. And no smoking. Now, I'll just go in and get change. You don't want me playing Gooseby, do you? You mean it's all right? He means it's all right. Thank you. <laughs> just so long as Patricia never finds out. All right.
you later. Where are you going? Oh, well, it's the sword's pass next door, Anna Lesby. You were going to the farms? Yeah, Max and Chisholm are away. They were here. Well, as long as it's not some big wild rave up. Oh, no, I'll let's go. What's in your bag? I want to take something. And this will be all right. Where did you get that from? Coffee? Where's alcohol? Didn't you ask you how old you were? Well, now we'll look over and see what made the fun. That's terrible serving kids drink. I don't know what your dad's going to say about it. Wait, well, not a kid's mills enough. That's what worries me. Well, go on. Have a nice time. See you later. And don't be late. Oh, what are you... You're doing here? Yes, I know. Um, I just popped back to sort out Anna's party. But I'm off again now. Did he mean that? Oh, no, he was called back to sort out the shops. I'm, um, I'm glad you changed your mind. Yeah, please have persuaded me. So am I the first one here? Well, yes. <laughs> oh, don't worry, someone has to be. So, uh, it's, um, it's a pity your husband couldn't make it. Uh, Peter says he's working away. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's his new job. More responsibility in that. Ah, oh, there you are. Did you put hairs on your chest? I'm supposed to be having dinner with Patricia tonight. Isn't she in Spain? Yeah, she is. And I had to fly back to sort out all this business with the shop. But you can positively see Ron Dixon now, can't you? Rubbing his hands with glee. So, um, you're footloose and fancy free? Well, I wouldn't put it like that. I mean, I was hoping to get back to Mallorca, but doesn't seem much chance of that with the way things are going on at the office. Oh, they're lovely. Um, can I get you a drink? Uh, wine? Orange juice? I'll have an orange juice, please. I'll give you a hand, eh? Where's Rod? Oh, he couldn't come. Oh. Cheers. Hey, glad you made it. I'm glad you persuaded me. I need to donate oh, out. Thank you. Um, Mike and Sorry, they can't come, but um, they've got something wrong with the poly. Okay. Hello. Hey. Hiya. Hey. 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 No fancy charades at all. Uh, doesn't somebody have a better idea? Oh, Max has got this really good game, Jenga. See so if we can find it. Again. Um. Hello. Hello, Patricia. Yeah, I, I know I rang earlier. I just wanted to check if Thomas was all right. Y yeah, fine, fine. Everything's fine. I'm uh, sorting out the shops. <laughs> I know it's a bad line. I'm ringing from the mobile phone. I'm working late on a sign. Yeah, I should be home soon. <sighs> Funny without you there. I'm missing you. That I'm missing you. Well, look, I'll try and uh, get this thing sorted out and get back, but to be honest with you, love, it doesn't look very hopeful. Yeah, all right then, love. OK, bye. Uh, love to Thomas. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just showing you how to do it. Been very Gilgo. Right. Oh, oh. <laughs> so is it? Okay. I'll go. Oh. Oh. No, no, no. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Mick. Come in. I've missed anything. I've just been sorting. Oh, there you go. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Can I help you? Yeah, I was there uh, looking at Diana Corkill. Only Mick saw me nothing at and he said to try, yeah? Oh, yeah, she is here. Yeah. Um, Diana, it's for you. Oh, come in. It's someone for you. Oh. How do you play it? It's very complicated. Oh, there he is. Are you joking? I brought a message from Rod. Well, he's been offered this move to Hull with his job. And he said if he doesn't hear from you tonight, he'd be going tomorrow. He's so concerned. Why didn't he tell me himself? Why did he need to send a mate? Look, why don't the pair of you just talk? I mean, stupid this. I don't want to be some go-between. I mean, the pair of you are just waiting for the other one to apologise. No. Do it before it's too late. Well, crawl back to him, say I'm sorry, and then get hit again. Oh, he said he regrets that. I bet he does. Your mate. Look, as you say, I'm just a messenger boy. Phone him tonight at mine. Tomorrow will be too late. He'll be on his way to Hull. Cool. 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 
Right, sir. Who's goes up now, anyway? Mine. Who would then? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, she's a cow. <laughs> oh, <hey. laughs> do you, um, do you think Diana's all right? Yeah, no problem. Peter's gonna plan the day. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> for all this, for making a show of myself in front of you. You haven't. You've got every right to be upset. What am I doing in a party with my managing ruins? You're looking after number one. That's all. <laughs> I'll have to phone him, won't I? You've just got to do what you think's best for yourself. <laughs> hey. Who's looking after the pizza place tonight? Our oh, Ellis. He's not too happy about it either. Why? Is this his job? Yeah, no, but he was hoping to have the night off so we could take Marianne out somewhere. Why is Marianne's girlfriend? More than a girlfriend, Jackie. He's willing to buy his clothes now. Oh. <laughs> Rot set in, eh? Hey, you. Yeah, yeah. Sounds serious. <laughs> yeah, I think it is. Hey, when are you two going to get married? Oh, well, I've got to get oh. a job sorted out first and mm. somewhere to live. No? Yeah, there's no rush. Oh. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. 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 Anyway. Oh, it's easy at the beginning. You've got to wait well later on. Jackie? Oh. You're Yeah. Just nick that one over there, Jackie. <laughs> he was going with it. Come and do this. I think you and I have been away for a while. Maybe there's something oh, going on between them. Trust you differently. Oh, it's wobbling. <laughs> Come on, leave Anna in with a go. Now go and lumber her. That's not the idea. So much has changed in my life in the last couple of years. Meeting Rod, getting married, learning to read, getting my new job. And now this. I suppose it couldn't last, could it? Oh, um, I was just going to the bathroom. Is everything okay? Yeah, fine. What to break a marriage between friends? Um, excuse me. Yeah. Do you feel like going downstairs now? I don't really feel like facing everyone. I feel ashamed. They'll all be talking about me and Rod. No, they up. won't. Besides, it's none of their business. Do you mind if we just sit here and talk for a bit? No. It's just a bit public, that's all. They might think we're the queue for the toilet. God, I must look a shame. You look alright. I'll have to do my makeup though. What about the bedroom? What should we? I can't go downstairs looking like this. Will you come talk to us while I do? Well, what if someone comes up? Please, I'll let me take a minute. to me. Rod doesn't know what he's missing. One idiot, eh? I haven't got a hank here or anything. Yeah. Thanks. So what do you think? Should have phoned before it's too late. Well, I don't want to make up your mind for you. But if you do go running to him, you might end up doing it for the rest of your life. I oh, know. That's what's stopping me. I wanted to hear you say I shouldn't. I know if I go running back to him, he's not going to suddenly change. He seems to like his routine. You know, work, telly, bed. And I put up with that, but not being hit. I'm just starting to discover new things. I just want to have some fun, a laugh. When I couldn't be he's all right, I relied on Rod so much. So now I just feel I don't need to lean on him as much now. I can look after myself. Yeah, well, I've always seen you like that. Don't forget, I met you before I knew about your reading problems. And what did you honestly think? There's some bimbo trailing after a macho husband. No. I saw someone with a great personality. A great sense of humour. Someone who's very attractive. 
but married. And what if I'd been single? I think we both know the answer to that one. What about Rod? Oh, he doesn't have to know. No, I, I, no, I said I'd be late. I just wanted to come home. <laughs> you don't mind, do you, with me living here? <laughs> no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! Yeah. You got the Jenga. I didn't think you'd mind. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't mind. As long as you don't mind me playing. No, as long as you pay your forfeit, Max. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Look, see, you're not playing it right. Mm -hmm. You've got to make sure. That... <laughs> no, really, the tower has got to be straight. Oops. <laughs> there you are. That's better. <laughs> so can we start now? Yes, yeah. Many of you here, are there? Thought there'd be more. No. So you're going to be the first one then, Max? Yes. Right. <laughs> there you go. No, 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 you see that? Yeah, that's cheating. You're supposed to use only one hand. Max, it's only a game. Well, you've got to abide by the rules. <laughs> hey, you only try cheating if you can get away with it. She just wants to get away with her forfeit. Except with you, you hear me say <laughs> No, I'm just nipping to the loop. And remember, one hand up. <laughs> you've been told, though. One hand up, one and there with a bit more hair uh, now than he used to have. Anyway, Brookside is back tomorrow at 10 past two and also Mystic Challenge is coming up here on Living Later on today. We've got the journalist and women's magazine editor, Marcel Darger-Smith. She's a guest on that, so that's coming up later. Now, Hannah and I today have been talking about the newspaper stories today. We're talking about the terrible floods and the bad weather conditions and also Halloween, because of course it is Halloween today. And we'd love to hear your comments about these stories, so you can phone us or email us on the usual contact details, which are on your screens right now. But we have had an email in here from Kay Williams. Now, Kay is Halloween. She says, hi, everyone. So, hello, Kay. Um, I think Halloween is great fun. It was when I was younger, but children should not go around unsupervised. Parents can also enjoy Sorting out the day. Mm, I should be doing that too. Trouble is, these winter mornings it's difficult to get out of bed. Shouldn't you be picking up Diana? What? For work. You'll be late. Last day of the course, isn't it? Yeah. It's just going. Oh, go on then. What's keeping you? You must have had a very good time at that party last night, the state you're in.
Diana. Diana. Look, uh, I'm sorry. Can we try and forget last night, please? Diana, are you all right? Diana must have overslept. What you saw last night must have looked a bit odd. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was just a misunderstanding. Sort of misunderstanding. Well, Diana and me, um, I was comforting her. She was very upset over Rod. Um, well, her and Rod had had a row. <laughs> you know, newlyweds and all that. I must admit, it was a bit embarrassing, you both coming out of my bedroom. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I know we shouldn't have been in there. No. But, uh, like I said, she was upset. Was it all right? Top to the party. Well, it was cut a bit short. Yeah, sorry. Look, uh, I'll be getting off. See ya. Is Diana ready for work yet? I was hoping to catch her. Oh, I can't wake her. Oh, out all night, eh? Well, not really. Quite early. Uh, at Max's house, Anna's party, you know. Oh, well, I have to wait. Yeah. Well, I'd better get this posted, then. Right, well, uh, I'll be getting off, then. Well, what about Diana's lift? If you wait, I'll, I'll wake her. Well, aren't you waiting? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be inside. OK. came to see if you'd heard from our Rod. Well, sort of. Tom came out last night, saying something about Rod getting off to Hull. Hull? Well, what's he going there for, the divvy? Oh, Diana, don't let him upset you. He'll be back soon when he, when he comes to his senses or when he wants his tea making. This morning. It's not like you to hang about. I'm waiting for Diana. Not like her to be late either. Well, we were expecting Diana. Uh, she's not going to work today. Oh? And she's not well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Tell her I hope she's better soon. Well, there's no point in waiting. I'll ring in for her myself when I get to work. See ya. Time last night, Anna's. Okay, quiet do. We had a good time. Me and Marianne. Okay, didn't we sweep this floor in last night? Yeah. Swept the floor, sorted the freezer, emptied the bins. I know my job. So I'll take it there wasn't many here then. Oh no, we didn't do so badly. You know, the usual kids off the estate. Oh, and Maxie found him in here feeling sorry for himself because his wife's still in Spain. <laughs> you surprised? Where would you rather be? In Spain or with Maxie's wife? <laughs> Do you, um, not to say anything? You? Yeah. I hope you haven't been throwing money about. We've still got debts to pay off, you know. It was a present for Marianne. She got me a jacket, too. I hope you're not taking advantage of her. Would I? She can look after herself, Mick. She's a nice girl. Oh, uh, too good for me, you mean? We're not jealous, are we? Of course not. I just don't want you messing her about, that's all. Ah, I wouldn't. I'll make sure you don't. Why don't you find yourself a nice girl? Don't worry about me. I'll sort myself out. It looks like Josie isn't coming back. Yeah, it's not that easy, is it? Kids that soon get used to having a new woman around the place. Anyway, where would I find the time? I'm too busy around here. 
Oh, work and no play never did anybody any good. Yeah, but it keeps the business running, Ellis. Nice. Well, if you prefer pizzas to women. Hi, I'm Maxie. That party of yours going out last night, did it? It was more of a small get-together, actually. But that Anna can make a party go with a bang, eh? Swinging up the chandeliers, were they? <laughs> well, as I said, it wasn't really a party. Yeah. Hope our Jackie behaved herself. Actually, she was all merely than expected. Keeping an eye on things, were you? Have they found the ones who did it yet? Uh, no, it doesn't look as if they will. If you ask me, I think the police have given up. Pity our Rod wasn't still in them. He wouldn't have given up. He always stuck at things, even as a young lad. Oh, are you, love? Have you had your hair done by our Trace yet? She's a lovely hairstylist. No. Uh, uh, actually, I go to this uh, regular place. Oh, just ignore me. I'm not happy for business. I just came to a pint of milk, actually. Be with you in a minute, love. What happened to Diana at your party last night? What? Oh, it's just that she's off work today, see? Oh, poor Di. I'd better go round and see her. Right, well, uh, let's get on. Nan, here's the key in case she's not up. Thanks, love. Here you go, Julia. Just the thing you need if you're visiting the sick. No, thanks, love. I'll get some chocolate to some over here. Is it all right if I have the weekend off? I'm sure Mike will be glad of the extra few hours. What is it this time? Down to London. Marianne's persuaded me to meet her family. To see the in-laws? Mm. See neither me, miss. Don't worry, bro. I'll wash behind the ears. <laughs> Hi, Mick. Um, any chance of a word? Isn't there something you could be doing at the back? Oh, like, um, what, making myself scarce, you mean? I was wanting a quiet word with Nick, actually. Ooh. Have you been misbehaving? Please, Ellis. All right, then. I'll leave you two boys to your little secrets. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, about the party last night. Was Rod there at all with Diana? No, I think she went on her own. Well, I've heard that they've been living apart. Bit of a tiff or something, you know. So was... Diana with Peter Harrison, if you know what I mean. I'm not sure, Max. But she did spend a lot of time with him. I mean, they both went up the stairs just after I got there, but I think she was upset or something, you know. Yeah. Well, that's when I caught them both coming out of my bedroom. Practically undressed. What? You know, I was wondering what happened there. Because the party came to an abrupt end when you came back down the stairs. I mean, had you heard if anything had been going on between them before last night? What's all that note, Max? Well, I don't want to sound judgmental on this, but it looked as though things had got a bit rough by the time they came out of that room. Diana! Di! Busy. Our trader said you're not well. You should be in bed. I'm all right. What are you doing? I'm just throwing these away. Nothing wrong with this. It's dirty. I'm finished with it. Oh, nothing a good wash won't cure. Still plenty of wear in there. I'll tell you what, I'll put these all in the washing basket and I'll see to them later. You go and get your feet up on the couch and I'll make us a nice hot cup of tea. Oh, I brought these for you. A present for my favourite granddaughter-in-law. Tell me, love, if we expanded into there, we could double our take into the stroke. We could, could we? Tell you what, it'll be going dead cheap at that stage and all, won't it? Eh? Ah, hey, D, can't you just see it? Well, it's still cost, then. Yeah, but it'd be worth it, wouldn't it, love? Look, if we knock through there, we could put the couch in the middle. And what would we put in it? Well, more of what we've already got. Plus newspapers, videos, leisure items. Look out Tesco's. Somebody's made a nice mess here then, haven't he? Oh, hello. So your spaceship's finally landed, has he? I've had business elsewhere. What did he think happened? What are you going to do about this, Barry? Well, it's not up to me, is it? Well, he could try getting rid of somebody. Uh, we were wondering what's going to happen about that end unit. Look, on, I'm at all these shops. But my agent sorts out things like that now. Maxi Farnham. That's what agents are for. I'll just get this washing on. I'm going to eat your chocolates. I don't feel like them. Mm, of course you don't. Time of the month, is it? 
No, I've just got a headache. You know what the cure is for that, don't you? Having a baby. Hey, you're not pregnant, are you? No. Where'd you keep the detergents? Why don't you just leave it? I'm only trying to help. I oh, know you are, I'm sorry. You want to get out and get some fresh air, do you good? No. Just to walk to the shops and back or trip round the back garden. Throw the cobwebs away. I couldn't face it. What's the matter, love? I had a bit too much to drink last night. No. Then what is it then? Just please leave me. Has something happened? Nothing. Nothing. Don't. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I didn't realise how rotten you felt. Just took the bed, please. Why not? I've let this all down. What have you done? Nothing. I haven't done anything. I wasn't born yesterday. Come on, love. You can tell me. I can't. I can't tell anyone. Is it something to do with our rod? He'll come back soon. Full of apologies. <laughs> I'll die if you ever found out. Found out what? What have you done, Diana? Last night, in the party, I was stupid. I went with Peter Harrison. Went where? Into a bedroom. You are? You don't mean you and Peter Harrison? <laughs> How many ears did Davy Crockett have? Don't tell me. You're organising a quiz down the Legion. Come on, dear. It's supposed to be a joke. What, the Legion? Well, we, the committee, that is, is looking for a new compa. Now, do you want a load of tag? You'll tell me anyway. Three. A left ear, a right ear, and a wild front ear. <laughs> Put these on the tab. Hey, why not there's a job in the window there? Nobody got a job. Yeah, but that's only a scheme. I need to earn real money. Well, I only hope that the audience down the Legion's got a better sense of humour than you two. I thought you were finding a compare, not being one. Ah, yeah, but, I mean, you've got to know what you're looking for, haven't you? Hey, you want to do it, don't you? Hey, why do you fancy me dad putting a show on at the Legion? Hey, Maxie! He'd make a show of me anywhere. <laughs> Maxie, what's happening with that shop next door? Oh, not you as well. The matter's in police hands. Yeah, but who's going to have it? Well, you'll have to ask Barry Grant that. I'll make your minds up, can't you? He said I had to ask you. No, I'm sorry, I really must go. Oh, yeah, I suppose you're back off to sunny Spain now, are you, eh? Now you've sorted this lot out. Actually, no. Unfortunately, something's come up and I've got to stay here. So, uh, I'll just get off and see about that job at the petrol station, then. What? Over there? The garage. I'm not having you work in there. Oh, well, why not? Because you've got enough to do with your scheme job. Hey, hard work never hurts anybody you know, love. Don't mean you'd have a working over there all hours. No, part-time. Tell me evenings and weekends. Look, I want to be able to buy decent clothes, CDs and that. She'd be all right over there with George, you know. Look, if you ask me for a reference, will you give me one? You know, honest, reliable, cheerful. <laughs> You're not going to let her do it. Well, at least we can keep an eye on her over there. And if she wants more money, I'm glad to hear one of my kids say they're willing to earn it. Well, don't you go overdoing it. Yeah, and me and your brother finally get a bit of keep off you. What were you doing going upstairs with the next door neighbour? I only went to the party because I was fed up. Rod hasn't been round here or in touch for weeks. And so you thought you'd go behind your poor husband's back and cheat on him? It wasn't like that. Rod sent a message saying that he was getting off to Hull with his job. I was upset. Ah, Rod, moving to Hull. How long has this been going on? What? You and him next door. There isn't anything going on. So, uh... We were friends. I just needed someone to talk to. I was lonely, fed up. You're a married woman. Whose husband's just walked out on her. We all have our times. I know. Oh, God, don't you think I regret what's gone on? That's it now, though, isn't it? Just finish this marriage forever. So you can start next week, then, eh? Oh, brilliant. Look, I'm not free all the time. I can manage most evenings and some weekends. Well, I'm going to need more than one person, so, uh, well, I'll sort out a rotor, OK? Yeah, well, 
Don't you want any references? You're Ron Dixon's daughter. That's good enough for me. <laughs> if I've got any problems, I'll ask your dad, all right? Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> Ta-ra, love. Ta-ra. Yeah. Hey, Mick, I just got myself a job. Oh, nice one. <laughs> See ya. Ta-ra. Can I have a word? What about? Well, this political newspaper we've all been getting. Stickers all over the place. Ellis says you're a member of the party, the, uh, New Britain party, isn't it? That's right. Fully paid up. Go to all the meetings. So perhaps you've got some influence in. What? You don't want the newspaper anymore, is that it? Well, it's nothing like that. Uh, there's been a few nasty incidences around here just recently. And now with Jimmy Corkle's shop. Yeah, I know. That was a terrible business, that, wasn't it? What a mess. You see, I'm worried sick something might happen to my kids. Yeah, well, you've got to watch them all the time these days. Especially after what happened to Jimmy's shop. I mean, what if there's another fire? What if next time somebody gets hurt? Well, let's hope there isn't a next time, eh? And, um, you've got no idea who did it? No idea at all. Sorry. I can't believe you did this. Our Rod didn't deserve this. I love Rod, I really do. Why did he walk out on me and not a word since? Well, while we're on the subject, why did he leave you? We had a row. He hit me. Ah, Rod did that. Well, it must have been something very serious. Well, he, he was jealous. He came round and found Peter here, and he just jumped to all the wrong conclusions. There was nothing going on, but he wouldn't listen. He just hit me and walked out. And so you thought, if you're going to get blamed for something, you might as well do it. No, there was nothing going on. Oh. I didn't want last night to happen, you know. Don't you understand that? Hey! Bit of a mess, isn't it? Yeah, we'll soon have it cleared up. Mm. Difficult to sort out how it happened. It always is. It's amazing how many crimes go unsolved these days. Well, the police are on to it and the fire brigade. They've sussed out how it started, but not who. I'm sure to No, not altogether. I was just telling Barry. Uh, nobody knows what happened. No. Not what's happened. What's going to happen? The shop, you know, can I rent it? Well, every time I ask one of you, you'll see the other one knows. So I thought, well, if I get you both together, eh? I'll think about it. Ta da. So, now you're back, uh, will you be looking after the shops? No. I mean, apart from the odd explosion there, uh, I'm quite happy with the way Fletcher's hand and things. Nice of you to say. So, uh, why don't we just carry on with the same arrangement? I mean, I've got other things to worry about. Ah, your new club. And one or two other things. Well, at least Jimmy Corkill's gone. He should never have been there in the first place. Mm. Sinbad was saying how much he wanted him out. Yeah, well, he's gone now, hasn't he? So all we have to do is uh, tidy up the unit and rent it to someone decent. Thanks. I'm sorry if I went on before, but I can't condone your actions. Are you going to tell Rod what I've done? No, love. He might be my grandson, but... It's up to you to tell him, if you think you should. Here, run this through your hair, love. I suppose you think I'm a slag. I just needed someone to talk to. I was all the upset with Rod. Peter listened. He understood how I felt. I know I should not let him kiss me, but he just made me feel so good. He made me feel attractive. That's no excuse. Rod's been acting like I don't even exist anymore. I needed... Uh, it was nice, somebody wanting me. But Peter was just a friend, someone I trusted. But Rod's your husband. I know, I know it should have been him. I wish he'd have been there. You've only been married three months. And I've ruined it all. Oh God, I wish it had happened. It just all went too far. It should never have started. I liked his arm around me. Someone to lean on. I liked him wanting me. I just thought a bit of a cuddle, that'd be all right. That'd be enough. I thought I could stop it before it went that far. I did say no, but it was just too late. You said no? Yeah, just as he, you know, I said, no, don't. And he didn't stop. It was too late. It was my fault for leading them on. It's never too late. Not if you say no. 
Not if you don't want it. You're home early. Mm. Yeah. You're all right. You don't look well. No, I'm not all right. That's why I turned back. Could be something you caught from Diana. Huh? With her being off sick. Oh. Best thing for you would be to go to bed. And he said no, but he just took no notice. He said it was too late to stop now. But he should have. I wish he had. I didn't want it to go that far. It was like you say it was. There's only one word for what he did. You shouldn't have let him on. But he didn't deserve what happened. This was right. Shall I bring you something up? Brookside tomorrow at 10 past 2 on Living. And at 2.40 today, we've got Mori Povich, who is speaking to women who are convinced that the men in their lives are cheating on them. And in fact, here in the studio, we're going to be speaking to relationship expert Tracy Cox, who's going to tell us exactly how you spot a love cheat. At 3.30, we've got courtroom action with Judge Judy. And at 4 o'clock, the real holiday show visits su su such far away places as Alicante and Ireland. Oh, sounds exotic. Mm. Uh, we've also got in the studio, in real life, we've got Sarah and Andrew, the newlyweds from uh, the Stag and Henshaw. So we're going to be catching up with them, looking at their wedding photos, oh. finding out what really happened on those stag do's, what the camera may not have caught. Uh, we're going to be catching up with them later on, and also we're going to be giving you another chance to take part in the Stag and Henshaw competition. On this competition, you get to win a night of partying your way around London like a VIP, all at the expense of living. And if you're a bit of a technophobe like me and are terrified of getting online, then keep it right here because we're going to have an exclusive living five-step guide to the net, which will put all your... Diana's still not feeling too good. I'm just going to pop in and see how she is. My nan's there. She stayed the night. All right. Um, could you give her a message for me? Yeah, sure. Could you tell her I need to speak to her? It's quite urgent. Oh, if it's that urgent, come in and tell her yourself. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, it's a bit difficult. I, if she's ill, I, I don't want to disturb her. Either. Could you ask her to phone me? Yeah, OK. It's all right, sweetness. You get it all out. Nancy, please. We're up here, love. Put the kettle on, will you? You're not to blame yourself, you know, pet. They're all the same men when it comes to the intimate side. It's all want, want, want. It's all, oh, you're beautiful. Oh, I love you. Oh, you're lovely. Till they get what they want. Then they don't care how rough they are. <laughs> no. They take what they call their rights, <laughs> then turn over, fart and snore. <laughs> You're all right, love. You got it all out. I'm right here. <laughs> You're right. Is she all right? <laughs> it's a long story. <laughs> Send me a photo, look. Oh, this is the Ledger Mess on holiday, is it? Yeah, Paul Howard's. And you're doing this dead long lesson as well. 
Yeah, now gave me a jet and everything, but I didn't actually expect him to write. Oh, I like the earring. It looks like a pole, doesn't it? Very, um, clean cut, that's the word. Yeah, that's two words. Hey, any sharper and you'll cut yourself. <laughs> So this is the one your dad made all the fuss about, is it? Oh, yeah, me dad kicks off about everything. I mean, we were only kissing, that's all. Well, we dad's a bit of jink, but we were only kissing. Yeah, well, I think if I'd found our Lindsay half-cut and wrapped around a young lad I hardly knew, I think I'd have kicked off a bit as well. Yeah, but you'd have been reasonable about it, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd have trusted me not to do anything stupid. Yeah, well, you see, your dad's probably remembering what he was like when he was 16. You do? Me dad was born 40. <laughs> so this letter business, then, what would you do if you was me? Why is it now? I mean, I mean, I don't think I really want to get into all that heavy stuff with lads. I mean, I like them as mates and everything, but all that serious stuff. I tell you, girl, if I'd have had a head like yours on my shoulders when I was your age, my life would have been very different. Very different. Yes, yeah, see, that's it. You do remember what it was like to be my age. I mean, you treat me like I'm a person. I was just talking to her. Shh. Outside. He even asked me to tell her to phone him. He never. He did. The nerve. Shh, man. Cheek of him. Well, that proves it, doesn't it? He's running scared. Are you sure about this? I mean, are you sure it was rape? Oh, don't look at me like that. We've got to be sure of the facts. I went out with him myself once, you know, and he seems all right. Well, he's intelligent, he's educated. In fact, everything seems to be stacked on his side. We've got to be sure she's telling the truth. And what do you think that is, eh? Do you think that's some slut that cheated on her husband and then makes up a pack of lies to cover herself? Look at her. Well, we've got no choice then, have we? We'll have to tell our Rod. No! Oh, Diana, we've got you. We can't keep something like this from him. No, please. I don't want him told. Anyway, I haven't got an address for him. I don't know where he is. Tom will have his phone number. I'll go and ring him. No, no Tracy, please don't. This will just prove him right. Everything he said about me, please don't. He'll never come back now. But, Diana, this is exactly what'll prove him wrong. He'll just see how much out of order he's been. Do you think so? Oh, of course he will. Look, if I know what I'd rather, he'll be back here before dinner time. I'll go and ring. I'll make a fresh pot of tea while you're down there, look. This one's going cold. <sighs> Do you really think he will come back? Oh, I don't know, love. Men have a funny way of looking at things. But our Tracy's right. He's still your husband, and he ought to be told. Oh, my first boyfriend had an earring. He was at sea. Any more underage kids been in trying to buy fireworks? Nobody trying to buy anything. We've been very quiet. Fulci, is that Edinburgh? Let's have a bunch of... No, it's private. It's a private letter. Oh, is it now? Who's been sending you private letters? Nosy. Anyway, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be down the leisure centre? Because, hey, listen carefully. Hey, I'll clock you in a minute, madam. I'm doing the late shift this week. I'm B. I'm starting a new part-time job over at the garage in five minutes. Tell me, did your Lindsay go through this cheeky phase? She's never grown out of it. So you're working for the opposition, eh? Hey, no, no. I've planted her over there, haven't I, love? She's a mole, you see, Jack. <laughs> she's allowed to sell all the petrol she likes, but she's got to direct the public over here when they want to buy the groceries. <laughs> all right. All right, Jim. Right, I'm off to distribute the these. It's poppy day next week. Do you want a box? And what do you suggest I do with it? Hmm? Hanging round my neck or what? Okay, I'm sorry, Jim. No, I am, mate, honest. Right, so I'll just uh, go and drop these off at Mix. Hey, best of luck at the petrol station, love. Thanks. I missed a super tag at 1992, are we? Hey, love, you better get off. You're going to be late. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Tra, Tra love. She's a nice girl, huh? Jackie, you know, she talks to me a lot. Loads more than our Lynn's did at that age. So, what can I do for you? What do you want? Something to do. Jimmy. I mean it. I've never felt so lost in all my life. Well, what about sourcing out your stock? What about looking for new premises? Premises? Get real, will you? How can I afford premises? Oh, I don't know how I feel. Right, that's one in the pizza parlour, one in the salon. I'll nip over the petrol station after see if George wants one. Hey, is it true what Jimmy was telling me about um, George Webb being a member of one of these racist organisations? He's all right, he's all George. Anyway, he means entitled to his views, isn't he? It is a free country. I don't know. Ah, oh, well, I suppose I'll go and have a bit of a wander round. Something to do. See ya. Yeah. See you, Jim. Charlo. 
I don't know what to do with him. Never seen him like this before. Seen him on the make, on the fiddle, on the ale. I've seen him on a real high because he was making such a go of cowboy cuts, but never seen him this low. He'll bounce back. Into what, though? You know, Jim? They loved that shop. He was doing so well. Yeah, but it was never going to be anything more than temporary, was it? And if he is serious about making a go of things, then he's got to find proper premises and start paying rent like the rest of us. I should have taken it up, you know, really, hairdressing. I've got a very natural way with hair. It's where our Tracy gets it from. But you got a better wage down the biscuit factory in those days. I've always regretted it. It's a terrible thing to waste your talents. Um, took a bit of time to get through. Doesn't want to know, does he? He can be a bit stubborn or rod and stupid. What did he say? Well, basically, he just said that this just confirmed everything he'd suspected between you and Peter. Does he think I'm a slut? Is that the word he used? Slut? Well, he's right. <laughs> I am. Very impressive. Yeah, well, it's only a few bricks. Bit of wood and an RSTA. No, no, I mean, very impressive the way you've got things moving. Well, I don't see any point in having a good economic unit lying empty while we're waiting for the insurance to pay up. I'm financing this myself. Yeah, well, they should pay up as soon as all the investigations are complete. It's all in hand. Don't worry about it. Oh, no. <laughs> right. Well, if there's anything else you need to see me about, you know where I am. Um, perhaps we should get together sometime. I don't think you're interested in any similar commercial developments, but, uh, hey, you come out to dinner one night. Uh, I'll talk to Patricia. Yeah, all right. Why not? OK. Great. So, what am I going to do now, eh? Now that you've got what you wanted and I'm out. I don't know, Jimmy. What are you going to do? Sod all by the looks of things. So, you're in the market for a the job then, are you? It might be why. Well, it just so happens that I happen to have a, a vacancy at the moment. For someone to be willing to go down to Burial for one or two weeks, maybe a month, to do an in-house training course with Halsall Leisure. All expenses paid, of course. You are joking, aren't you? No, I'm not, Jimmy. Or do I often go round the streets of Liverpool offering people jobs? Hey, look, it's nothing dodgy, is it? Couldn't be less dodgy. So what is it, this job, then? Ron. Yeah? Will you do something for me? For you, my love, anything. Will you sell us the Moby? The Moby? You want me to sell it to you? We'll pay you for it. Yeah, well, that's what sell you usually means, yeah? Jimmy's got the money, you know, we can pay you cash up front. And I'll make sure he puts in for his driving test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to push the idea to me, love. You mean you'll do it? Well, you haven't heard how much I want for it yet, have you? I don't care what you want. Whatever you want, I'll find it. I don't want him drifting off into his old ways again. I want the Jimmy of the last few months back. He needs his feet on the ground. Some kind of premises to trade from. Hiya. How are you, love? Enjoying your half term? Hey, Jackie, don't worry, love, OK? It's yours. We'll fix a fair price. It's not doing much good stuck out there anyway, is it? Might as well go to a good old. Thanks, Ron. Um, that advert in the window about the jobs in the petrol station? Gone, love. Oh. Well, one of them has anyway to our Jacqueline. Don't know if he's got any more. you better go and ask him. Do you want anything else, love? Do you want a Mars bar or something? Yeah. Should be on there. All right. Nice one. Cheers. Ron. Yeah? The Moby. I think it might be too late. for a bit. Did you put the kettle on? Oh, kettle? Oh, no, not. Sorry, no, I forgot. Look, I've got to go round to the salon. Don't you dare walk out on it. Your brother, that's different. He's a man. But you don't walk out on your own sister-in-law. So, what did you say, I Rod? Mm, just a lot of stupid, nasty things. Like he does when he's badly hurt. Oh, he'll be back. Didn't sound like it, man. He said he never wants to see it again. He said he just wants to make a clean break and... Well, she can't pretend she wasn't already halfway to an affair with Peter Harrison by crime rape. 
You'd have to look at it from his point of view, Nan. And if it was rape, then she should go to the police. She won't there, will she? She won't even tell her own dad. She's too ashamed. Yeah, I know, but if the police believe her, then what I'll have to do is serious rethink. Well, can't we just mention the police to her to see what kind of a reaction we get? Your dad's not going to come stooping round here, is he? No, he's gone over to Sheffield. What did he say about going down to Blunt, to the NEC? Well, you know, the usual stuff. You're too young, <laughs> drugs, blah de blah And I really wanted to see the beautiful self. Still, I've got this friend of his, Lynn. Well, I've got her working on him. It should be OK, cos he's still trying to impress her. Yeah, well, he's not going to be too keen about you working in a petrol station, is he? Well, why shouldn't I get a job if I want one? I mean, Jackie Dixon's working over there, and her dad's OK about it. I'll tell you what, let's go and see her, find out how much she's getting paid. You know, whether it's worth going for it or not. Get a light. All right, girls. Jimmy! The voice of God. See you. Ta-da. Ta I'm never going to get married. I'm going to have loads of lovers. Which film stars, isn't there? I'm never going to get married either. They only mess each other up. Who are you talking about? You're Sammy. Everybody. What have you done, Jimmy? What have I done? Well, let's say, um, I got up, I had a wash, I brushed my teeth. Who's so that money? What's it for? What money? The money Barry Grant gave you. What's it for, Jimmy? Jackie, you've spoiled me surprise now. Sweetheart, you and surprises. You go together like matches and gunpowder now. What's it for, eh? Expenses. Listen, do you want to hear the good news or the good news? Just tell me. I... Dun, 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 dun. I've got a job. Oh, God. Well, don't say it like that. Say, oh, God, that's brilliant, Jimmy. So what does he want you to do? Only oh, he wants me to go down to Brom and work in one of those Halsall Leisure nightclubs for a month, you know, learn the ropes with the firm guarantee of a job in the new club when I get back. Oh, not clubs, Jimmy, please. No, come on, it's straight up this, honest. Look, I'm going to be director of security. Ed Bouncer, you mean? Ed's an only bouncer. In other words, you're going to be a bouncer, Jimmy, is that right? Will you never leave? Just cos you put on a dicky bow and you stand round looking like something out of a B-movie doesn't mean you've gone up in the world. It's still clubs. It's still dodgy deals in back rooms with fellas tanked up to the eyeballs. <sighs> when are you going to grow up, babe? I can't go to the police. They'll say I was lying. They'll say it was my fault. It was my fault. Tell Tracy what happened, love. Go on. I can't. Yes, you can. My nan's already told me most of it. Right, you stayed at the party after Tommy had left. Well, why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I have some fun for a change? Diana, I'm not blaming you. I just don't understand why you went into a bedroom with Peter Harrison. It was just to fix my makeup. We were in the way on the stairs. We were trying to talk. I know we should have said. No, sooner, but why did you let it go so far? I don't know. I, I just wanted someone to hold me, someone to make me feel good. So when exactly did you say no? It was actually, um, you know, it was too late and she panicked. So you definitely said no, you wanted him to stop? Yeah. Well, that's it then. From what happened from then on was rape. No means no. In any language. Have you still got the clothes you were wearing? I've got them in a plastic bag. I don't know why you're being so kind. <laughs> I wish I was dead. <laughs> Diana, it nearly happened to me once, you know. Do you remember Mark Potter? I don't think there's a woman in the world that it hasn't happened to in one way or another. Some of them are just unlucky and, well, that's it. Some of them are lucky and managed to get out of it like I did. Some of them don't even know that they have been raped because they think that men have some kind of rights over them or, or that they've some way provoked them. That's right. That's what I told her. As my nan says, no means no in any language. Hiya. Hello. This is my mate, Leanne. Hiya. Hiya. This is Jackie Dixon. You're the one with the brother, aren't you? The tall blonde one? Oh, I think he's really cool, eh? Oh, yes, yeah, so is he. Um, we come out to this part-time job. Is your boss still looking for someone? Morning, girls. Oh, it's hot. 
Oh, Dad, what kind of a greeting is that? Yeah, well, you don't have to keep checking up on me every five minutes, you know. Who's checking up on you? I've just come around to drop these off. Yeah, we'll just stick them on there. Aye, that's uh, £15.50, please. Does it just need one more assistant, does it? Is it one job or two? Eh, uh, one, I think. Cos we're thinking of applying, aren't we? Yeah. Hey, can you sign there, please? To break this couple of hours after school. Thanks very much. You called me the seat, okay, sir. Thanks. Bye. thanks. Bye. Hey, that was very efficient, that was. What a credit card sale. Oh, I had to complicate it. Well, does Mr Webb explain everything? Oh, listen, it's dead easy. You could do what your eyes shut. He explained a lot to me in five minutes. Oh, should we go and ask him, then? Uh, 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 uh. Just hold on a minute, girls. I want to see him first. Where is he, Jack? Oh, he's around somewhere. Right, I'll put a good word in for you. I'll be all right, this. Bet you meet all kinds of interesting people. Morning. Morning. Hello. Oh, yeah. Pump one, was it? Yes, yes, it was. Um, hey. Uh, Twelve pounds and a penny, I'm afraid it went over. Yeah, well, listen, just forget the penny. Right, thanks very much. Uh, well, that's ten and uh, two is twelve. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Who is that? Oh, was still next door neighbour, Max Vaughan. Oh, honestly, and she's impossible here. He's at least 30. He's dead old. 30 years and old? Not if you're dead fit like that. Have you got a fella? No. Well, I met this lad from Manchester when I was in Scotland. He's coming down soon for an open day at the poly. He wants to do engineering or something. What does he look like? Have you got a photo? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he is really nice, eh? Let me see. Yeah, I'm going to have to put a stop to that. She's very good, though, your daughter. She's very quick. But I could do without a girl's social in there. <laughs> hey, you keep it alive, George. Tell you what, though, I must have been a cracker of a joke, <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, you don't have to only do some jokes, do you? What do you want jokes for? It's this thing down the Legion, you know, there, auditioning for the compares job, and I don't know what's doing a bit of that, you know, so I thought I'd put an act together. Right, well, if I think of any, yeah. Yeah, actually, it should be a good deal, you know. Family do, there's going to be a lot of dancing, a few laps. What, down the Legion? Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, why don't you come along? You'd enjoy it. Well, when is it? Next week on Bonnie Night. Hey, yeah, come along, George. Me on. I'm going to need all the help I can get. <laughs> yeah, I think I will. Cheers, Rob. Good man, stick it in your diary. All right. Um, Mr Webb, could you have a word, please, about the job? Ho, ho, ho. I think I'll leave you to this one, mate. Best of luck. <laughs> yes, a brave girl. You'd be better for something to eat. How's that, eh? That's better, isn't it? I'll tell you something. If I get my hands on that Peter Harrison, I'll have his guts for gas. So I'll teach him. Diane, I'll have some of this toast. I'll cut it into small pieces. No, I couldn't, honestly. Well, go on, love. Just have one little piece, and then our Tracy will run us down to the police station. Well, don't you think it'd be better to phone first? No. Them that squad cars and things around here, we don't want that. Don't worry, love, I won't leave you. I don't... I mean, I've seen documentaries on the telly about rape. I don't think I've had the guts to go through with all that. Hey, don't undersell yourself, Diana. And think about it. I mean, what are the choice have you got? If you don't self-respect, otherwise fellas like Peter Harrison, well, they just keep on getting away with this and, and the Lord and everyone else just keep patting them on the back and saying, never mind, that's just the way lads are. Eat toast. Maybe I should just go and pack my stuff and get back to my dad's. Well, that's just admitting that it was your fault. It was my fault. In the beginning, anyway. Is it your fault for being so pretty? Is it your fault for having beautiful hair and lovely legs? Well, start thinking like that, love, and the life was all covered in sacks and stuck away in her reams. Oh, you're right. I know you are. It's just... <sighs> OK. Please, a good girl. Run upstairs, love, and get that plastic bag of clothes under the sink in the bathroom. I'd better get dressed. No, just stay the way you are. I'll just get your coat. Come on, love. You won't leave me, will you? Don't worry, love. I'll be right there. Diana! Diana, I've got to speak to you. <laughs> Look, I really have to speak to Diana. I don't know how you've got the name. There's a name for men like you. Come on, Nan. Rapist.
Brookside will be back on Monday on Living at 10 past two. And if you're a big fan of our Entertainment Now feature that we do on Wednesdays, then you will love tomorrow's show because at 10 past two, there is a 30-minute Entertainment wow. Now special Fantastic. just for you. Looking forward to that very much. And you'll be pleased to know that our Stag and Hen show competition is coming up. This means that you and four of your mates could win a fantastic night out in London. You'll be treated like a huge star the whole night and get off your face to have a great time. So stay tuned <laughs> for that. Rachel does that kind of thing all the time, you know. And it's a bit of a win fest going on on Living at the moment because yesterday we spoke to Tracy Cox. She's uh, written a couple of books, Hot Sex and How to Do It, Hot Relationships and How to Have One. An apt name. And she has. we asked you um, which program is she an expert on? Of course, it is the real dating show. And you get to win those books if you got it right. Martha Stanbury from Aintree, Jessica Rag. If you'd just like to stand here, Mrs. Corkill, and take off your dressing gown. Can I just double check you haven't had a bath or a shower since the incident, is that right? I just washed my hands and face. And these are the underclothes you were wearing when the incident took place? Good. Do you want me to take everything off? If you don't mind. Yeah? What's happening about work? You're not going in today? No. Nothing wrong, is there? No. Nothing worrying you? No, just uh, feeling a bit off. Bug or something. Well, I'm just downstairs. If you want anything, just give me a shout. Thanks. That's fine. If you'd just like to move off the paper. This will go to forensics now, for tests. Right, so if you'd like to climb onto the bed, Mrs. Corkhill, I'll try and make this as quick and painless for you as I can. for the liquor license. For the new club? Yeah. So, uh, what's going on with you two, like? Am I getting paranoid or are you following me? It's our turn. I've got nowhere to go. Well, we've got an interview later. Oh, yeah, with that Mr Webb. But until then, we've got nowhere to go. Oh, you both got interviews, eh? Well, that's good, isn't it? Well, you both look, um, very, uh, smart. Well, you've got to look nice when you're dealing with the public. So, uh, what did your dad think about all this? Oh, right there, is it, eh? Um, don't say anything to him, will you, Mr. Dixon? I want to tell him in my own time. My lips are sealed. But, hey, listen, since how you got nothing else to do, joke for you. You're right. This fella, you see, he's feeling a bit peckish. So he goes into this restaurant, a fish restaurant. What, a fish and chip shop, you mean? No, no, you know, like a proper restaurant. You know, a proper restaurant. And the waiter says... I don't like fish. No, funny enough, Katie, he doesn't say that. What he does say is... Don't you? Not any kind of fish. Well, I quite like the taste. I just don't like the idea of them being killed. It's the eyes. <laughs> Look, just let me tell it, OK? It's me audition. I need the feedback. Does it take time? So the waiter says... Would monsieur like to choose a fish from the tank? Why does he talk like that? Because he's French. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise he was supposed to be French. Sorry. Would Monsieur like to choose a fish from the tank? Ah, uh, you mean you've got real fish running around in tanks? Yeah, and they yank it out and they kill it for you. Oh, the poor little fish. Look, will you stop going on about the poor little fish? Oh, that's so sad. Look, this is a joke, this, right? It's funny, just let me tell it to you. So the man says... Which man? The one who... Oh, never mind, just forget it, eh? Hope to God I get a better audience than you down at the Legion.
Oh, you want to make a good job of it, haven't you? Wasn't that bad a joke? What wasn't? No, nothing. I don't suppose you've seen Barry Grant anywhere, have you? Mm, now you see him, now you don't. Yeah, mostly don't. Maxi Farnham, just a slippery. Mm. Tell you what, I'd make a crack in the news agents this, wouldn't it? Hey? Magazines and newspapers over there. Video stationary cards down there. We're doing a spot of empire building, are you, Ron? Hey, first one shop, then two, then the whole chain, mate. Tell you, it's gonna be a Dixon's in every high street in England. There already is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there'll be an R Dixon's oh. in every high street in England. Hey, sir, now, have you got a minute? How long's the money? Well, just want to try this gag out on you. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Oh, this guy, you see. All right, Mrs. Corkill, just relax. Let your legs fall apart. Now, this won't take a minute. We just need to take a couple of swabs, that's all. Try and relax now. Matty's still off sick, then? Yeah. Oh, it's odd that you know, Marcy. He fought tooth and nail to keep this job. And when he'd drag himself in here off his deathbed rather than let us down. It's like he's trying to avoid someone, you know what I mean? Yeah, probably trying to avoid getting blown up by a petrol bomb. Expected that New Britain stuff finally put the wind up in. Ah, oh, maybe. I don't know, Marcy. Oh, come on, I'll sort that out. You finish off the pizza bases. Who for me? Sir, where's Ellis, then? Why is it here? Ellis has found true love. Himself a mirror, has he? Oh, nasty, Mars. No, he's found love with a capital L and he doesn't know what to do with himself. Mm. Quite touching, really. He's like an 18 year old kid. <laughs> Still that girl from the education offices? Marianne, yeah. I think it's a real thing this time, though. They're talking about getting married. <laughs> married? Ellis! Morning. All right, boys. Hey, Ellis is getting married to that Marianne girl. Poor kid. She doesn't know what she's letting herself in for. Hey, they're in love now, Sim, but it does funny things to your love, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Too old to remember me. <laughs> So what can I do for you, Ron? Well, Mick, look, uh, I know that in principle you're for this nightclub, but I've just seen the application for the liquor licence. And, uh, well, you know, we did say at the meeting the other week, if you remember, well, we did say that we put an objection in. And I thought, well, at the very least, we could get them to ban spirits, you know. I wouldn't object to a wine bar. I'm sorry, mate, but I'm sticking to my original position. Yeah, Mick, but don't you see that the more signatures I get, then the more clout it'll have? No. Oh, well. Worth a try. What about you, Simbad? Oh, don't look at me, mate. Haven't you had free membership, Ron? We have. Yeah? Frank Rogers, Mick. I'm oh, sorry, mate, but anything free and uh, I'm going for it, you know. Everybody got one. Yeah, well, I didn't. I oh, don't worry, Ron. Yours probably got delayed in the post. Uh, excuse me, Marcia, but I don't want free membership. He's flaming gone and bribed everybody now, hasn't he? That's typical of Barry Grant, that is. Bribed the opposition. I won't get any signatures now. I don't know, it's impossible to get any sense of community spirit going round here. Feeling better now? I wrong Tracy to fetch you some clean clothes. Not too cold after your shower. Yeah. I'm sorry about all the medical stuff. I know how unpleasant it is, but it has to be done. Now, do you feel ready to talk? She already told that other policewoman what happened. Yes, I know, Mrs Brogan, but I'd like to go over it again. When you're ready, Di... You don't mind me using your Christian name, do you? No. When you're ready, we'd like you to make a formal statement. Do you understand what that means? So I understand from these notes I've got here that your alleged assailant is known to you, is that right? He's our next-door neighbour. So, how well do you know him? Oh, there was, um, there was nothing funny going on between them, was the love? If you'd just let Diana answer the question herself, Mrs Brogan. Oh, excuse me. I beg your pardon, but I'm just a bit anxious for her. You go ahead, love. He's a friend of ours. He just gave me lifts to work. So you knew him well? I don't know what you mean by well. I just knew him. So he drove you into Manchester every morning and out again every evening? Most days, yeah. And did you ever stop for a drink or a chat or a meal? No. And he made no advances to you on any of those journeys? No. So whose idea was it that he drove you into Manchester? Did he suggest it? No. Um, I think it was his mum. 
That's Barbara Harrison. She's deputy headmistress at the local school. So his mother suggested the idea. I don't think he was too keen on it at first. But later he was keener. I didn't mean it like that. I'm not trying to trip you up, Diana. I'm just trying to find out how Peter felt about you. Did you get the impression that he liked you? Do you... How do you mean? Physically. Sexually. I didn't think about it. And what about you? Did you find him attractive? You don't have to try and say anything you don't want to, love. I don't know what you want me to say. If I say yes, you'll think... You'll think... I won't think anything. There's no harm in finding somebody attractive. I just want to know what you thought. Well, yeah. I liked him as a person. Yeah, I found him attractive. He was very warm, fun to be with. But I didn't... Well, I didn't try to... I just never thought of him like that. We were just friends. What would he do to him? He'll be taken in for questioning to another station, not here. And if we decide there's a case to be answered and you're sure you want to go ahead, then eventually he'll be charged. Are you sure you want to go ahead, Diana? Nobody will think any the worse of you if you change your mind. It'll all just be forgotten. So what else is he likely to ask? Him. Um, what would you do if a car drove off without paying? I don't know. What did you say? I don't know. Someone told me that they take it out of your wages if that happens. Are you sure about that? Well, that's not fair. Katie. What are you doing with her? Nothing. I thought you two weren't seeing each other anymore. Well, it's a bit difficult not to when you're in the same class. Oh, in school, fair enough, but out of school. Leanne's my mate. If I want to see her out of school, I'll see her. I think I'd like to have a word with you privately, please, Casey. <sighs> Look, I'll go. I've got an interview in a minute anyway. Um, Sammy, I don't have to say this. I mean, I understand if you don't want to talk to me or anything. But I'm really sorry about what happened between me and Owen and that. Not that anything did happen between me and Owen. It was all in my head. And I'm sorry. You caused us a lot of trouble. I know. Do you? I doubt it. I do. Honest. I'm really sorry. But I'm not that stupid anymore. I've grown up an awful lot since then. Um, look, I'll go and see Mr Webb now anyway. It's really time. She's all right, really, you know. I know she's a bit wild and everything, but she can't help it. It's mum and dad. The way they're dead strict. Yeah, well, it's the effect she's going to have on you that worries me. Oh, and you think I'm that easily led to you? No way. What like the effect I'll have on her? Does my dad know you still hang around together? Don't tell him. Please. She's the best maze I've ever had. Don't tell him.
later. They're a professional couple, him and his wife. Very nicely spoken. And is this a complete list of everybody who's there at the house at the time? Yeah. Was there a lot of drink around? There was some. Beer, wine, spirits? I don't know. I was drinking wine. And how much wine would you say you drank? Oh, she sells them drinks, do you, love? Just the one glass to be social. One glass? No, it's more than that. Two or three. I wasn't drunk. I don't know. I was upset. By what? What had upset you? Rod, that's my husband. He sent a message. He wanted me to ring him. So where was he at the time? He was at work, was he? No, he was staying at a mate's. He's another policeman. And this mate came round to say that he was moving to Hull. Who was moving to Hull? Rod, your husband. Unless I rang him that night to say I wanted him back. If I didn't, he was going to go for good. So, wait a minute. You and your husband weren't living together? We had a row. We walked out. What did you row about? Well, he thought... He thought I was messing about with... somebody. With who? So, did you make this phone call to your husband? But it wasn't true. About Peter Harrison, honest, it wasn't. Did you ring your husband? No. Why should I? He was in the wrong, not me. He accuses me of all sorts and just expects me to run after him. Why should he call all the shots? No. I should have... I should have rang him. None of this would have happened. It's all my fault. And is everything always your fault, Diana? My dad's gonna be upset when he finds out, you know. I know he's mellowing a oh, bit, that's but... that's Lynn. She tells him off. Yeah, well, he's not gonna like the idea of you hanging around with Leanne, is he? And that's cos he doesn't know it. Yeah, well, fair dues. She did apologise. She even sounded as if she meant it. I don't think my mum and dad like her very much. I mean, they're always off somewhere in the caravan. I know my dad can be a total pain, but at least he cares. I don't think he cares, do you? My dad's really tough on it. Yeah, all right, you've convinced me. I'm a sucker for a sob story. Yeah, I don't know. But it's all true, though. Well, look, I won't tell me dad, but you must promise me you won't get involved in any of her wild ideas. I promise. She doesn't really have any wild ideas, you know. It's all in her head. She's always making things up. Lying, you mean? No, making things up. It's not the same thing. Well, what's this job interview she's gone for, then? Part-time job in the petrol station. I'm going to try for it as well. You are? Yeah, well, it's only a couple of hours after school, nothing much. And what about your exams? Well, I can study there. I can do a lot of reading there. And what does my dad think about this? He doesn't know. Yeah, well, he's not going to allow it, is he? You know he's dead set on you doing well in these exams. Yeah, well, so am I. But it doesn't mean I can't do other things as well. Anyway, I might not even get the job yet. So what's the point in having a row about something that might not even happen? If I get it, I'll tell him. Like the blue touch paper and retire, eh? Well, don't do it when I'm around. <laughs> Very odd. Carlo the busies came round before and took that John Addison and what's his name Peter away. And Mrs. Yeah, you're on about dinner time. Oh, don't tell me he's up to his old tricks again. Oh, so the rumours are true. Are they fingers Addison, eh? You know what they say, don't you? It's like an illness. Once they start, they can't stop. Mm. So you were sitting side by side on the stairs at this point. Yeah. Speak up, love. She won't be able to hear you. And this is when he kissed you. No, that was later. So then you went into the bedroom with him. Is that right? Well, someone came up to use the toilet. It was difficult. I was still upset. I needed to fix my makeup. So I said something like, let's go into the bedroom. And did you stop for a moment to think if that was a sensible thing to do? No. I didn't think he was going to... that we were going to... I just thought it was more private so we could talk. 
I couldn't go downstairs. I looked a mess. You know, my eyes were all red and everyone I'd know had been crying. So then what happened? We sat on the bed and we talked. And that's when he kissed me. And you liked being kissed? Yeah. He made me feel very attractive. But then it got, you know, a bit out of hand. I started to feel guilty and I said, what about Rod? And he said, Rodney, never know. And what do you understand him to mean by that, Diana? Rodney, never know we've been kissing. And that's all you understood him to mean? Yeah. And touching a bit as well. He took your bra off. You undid it and pushed it up. And you let him do this? Yeah. And it was at this point that sexual contact first occurred. Is that right? Yeah. And that's when I said no. I didn't want that. It was all right up to that point. And I know it was wrong. But I did want it to go that far. But that's all I wanted. Just that much. No more. I tried to stop him. But he said he couldn't stop then. He'd gone too far. And how hard did you try to stop him, Diana? There's no evidence of any bruising. You didn't fight back at all, did you? I did. You just wanted to punish your husband, didn't you? You didn't scream. You didn't tell anybody at the party what had happened. You waited 24 hours before you contacted us. It's all right, love. Don't you let her bully you. And you still expect us to believe... No, I didn't. You're right. I didn't do any of those things. And I'll tell you why. Because I still thought it was my fault. But it wasn't my fault, was it? It wasn't my fault. I made it quite clear how far I was prepared to go. I said no and I meant no. Good. Excellent. It's my body. I know people will say I was wrong. I know they'll say I led him on, but... Well, he led me on just as much more because I was upset and he took advantage of that. But after I said no, anything after that, it was rape. Yes, it was. And I'm sorry I had to make you go over things that must be very difficult to talk about. So what happens now? We'd like you to make a statement, but I think it's only fair to warn you that not everybody will believe this was a rape. And if you think I was bullying her, Mrs. Brogan, well, that was nothing to what she'll have to face if she decides to go ahead. This is the moment of truth, Diana. If you choose to proceed, then the whole vast engine of the law will grind into action, and your feelings and your self-respect may well be smashed into a pulp. You'll be called all kinds of names. You'll be accused of malice. You'll be accused of destroying an innocent man in an attempt to save your marriage. You'll be the one on trial every bit as much as he is, and the one most at risk because there's centuries of prejudice behind the judgments people are going to make about you. Instinctively, the public's going to be on his side. So think very carefully before you come to any decision. Brookside will be back on Living at the same time tomorrow and it's a pretty tough and harrowing storyline, Diana's rape. And if that's a situation you found yourself in or something you would just like some help and advice on, then there are some numbers going across the screen for you now. Or you could visit the Living homepage and go to the Living directory. It's kind of A to Z of all sorts of useful helpline numbers that you might need. So go there and have a look. Now, if on Monday last week you knew that Brad Pitt man married Jennifer Aniston, and if on Tuesday you knew that Catherine Zeta-Jones was to marry Michael Douglas, then you could be a winner in our big stag and hen show competition. Now, this is a competition to send someone and four mates off on a huge clubbing trip around London. So do keep it living live, because before o'clock this afternoon, we'll tell you who won that competition. Plus, we're going to give you the chance to win a top date. We're going to give away a day-to-day, -day, anything from motor racing,
So the head waiter says, he says, an excellent choice, monsieur, the wild green fairy lip squid. Gervais will kill it for you and cook it. Gervais? And... What kind of name is that? What kind of name is the wild green, whatever it was? Mom. Oh, come on, girls, don't you two start. Tony, be quiet. Your dad's trying to tell us a joke. What, Mum? Tony, haven't you got something to do? Otherwise, I'll find something for you. I can, you know. Uh, excuse me, but I mean, I am in the middle of a joke here. Can you just stick this card in the window? <sighs> and we'll give it to Jackie. And then you get out from underneath my feet and go and do something. Tur. So? Oh, Tur, what a stupid idea. Go on, Ron. Now, Gervais, he is too kind-hearted, you see, to kill this wild green fairy lip squid. This is getting very silly, Ron. Dee, will you just shut up and listen, please? Now, as I say, Gervais, you see, he's too kind. So he takes it into Hans, who's the dishwasher, and he says, Hans, will you kill this wild green fairy lip squid for me? Jimmy took me to a fish restaurant once, you know, they had all these lobsters swimming about. Oh, they're nicer than they look, you know, lobsters. I had one once on holiday. For goodness sake, what is the matter with you two? Do you know what? There is something seriously wrong with women's brains. Do you know that? Hey. Yes, Ron. No sense of humour. None at all. It's a scientific fact. Right. I'm going to see if I can find Barry Grant again and talk to somebody civilised for the change. See if he's made his mind up about that end unit yet. I think we should open it as a florist. Florist? What are you talking about, a florist? You don't make any money out of flowers. Anyway, who'd run it? I would. Oh, you would? Oh, I see you'd run it. Oh. You won't help me in here, like, but you're perfectly happy to do shop work if it means flitting about with a couple of daffodils in a fern. No, D, I have told you. Magazines, videos, cards. That's where the money is. I mean, there's cards for everything these days, isn't it? Hey, there's get well cards, survive your operation cards, sorry your dead cards. I mean, you can't do anything these days without somebody sending you a card for it. This is a hint. He wants a good look card for his compare edition down the Legion. Dearest, I will settle for an audience of all men. Thank you very much. Hiya, Jax. Hiya. What are you up to in such a rush? To find Barry Grant. I'm not answering anything. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> this is such a nightmare. It's like something out of Kafka. Who made the accusation anyway? Mrs. Corkill made this accusation. Yeah, we know why, do you? No, Mr. Harrison. I don't know why. You tell me. I'm not telling you anything. Mum. Yeah. Give me that hot lad's a mess in Scotland, Paul Howard. The one in the tent, I can hardly forget, can I? Well, he's coming over from Manchester for an open day at the Poly, and he wants to see me. He wrote me this letter. He looks a very nice lad. Are you going to see him again, or what? Well, you know what my dad would say. I think we can make a pretty good guess. They're not telling you, I say. He'll only overreact. He'll upset everybody, including himself. We'll introduce him to the idea slowly, if necessary. Oh, thanks. And if you see your dad and he tells you a joke, don't interrupt and laugh at the end. Oh, well, I know when it is the end. <laughs> would you till that for me? He's going to go to the bank and sort some bills out and back in 20 minutes. Oh, hello, Keith. Hiya. There you are. That wasn't too bad, was it? Excuse me, that notice in the window, the one about the job at the petrol station. Hi, Jax. Hi, hey, You're working there, aren't you? So what's the score? Is there a job there or not? Because when I asked him about working there the other week, he said no chance. Well, he's definitely interviewing people now. So do you reckon it's worth me having another word with him? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm in your way. No, you're all right, kid. How are you doing, anyway? Not so bad. Just looking around for the part-time job. Oh, well, life is a constant and ever-changing pattern, son. We move on. God, he's going to get philosophical now. In my case, to Birmingham. Just got a couple of cans, love, for the journey. Then uh, I'm going to go and get packed. See you, Jax. Hey, why don't you have a word with Mr Webb now? I'll come with you. I'm on in ten minutes anyway. Try to... Oh. See you, kids. Hey, I think you prefer the fella. Great. So, you've not changed your mind, then? No. You deny absolutely having sex with Mrs Corkill. The quicker we can clear this up, Mr. Harrison, the sooner you can go. Well, I don't actually deny it. So you did have sex with her? Yes. Well, why didn't you tell us this before? Because you didn't ask before. 
The question, as I understood it, was did you rape her? I did not rape her. In other words, she consented to sex? Yes, of course she consented to sex, otherwise we couldn't have had it, could we? Well, you started by kissing her? I started by comforting her. She was upset. And you maintained she was a willing participant? Yeah, very willing, actually. Didn't she express any reservations about what you and she were doing? She said, what about Rod? And I said, doesn't need to know, does he? Doesn't need to know what? Well, that we're going to have sex. So you were assuming at that point that full sexual intercourse was on the agenda? Yeah. <laughs> That's the way you want to put it. Oh, sounds a bit clinical. We were both very worked up. And when Mrs. Corkill asked, what about Rod, you assumed that she had the same expectation, full sexual intercourse. Yeah, obviously. Did she at any point ask you to stop? No. No, she didn't. And she did not put up any resistance at all. Quite the opposite, in fact. What? <sighs> if she'd wanted me to stop, she'd have fought me off, wouldn't she? When it was over, what state was she in? Oh. By that time, she realised what she'd done. She was very upset. Of course she was. We were both upset. And worried, obviously. But the worst word you can use to describe what happened is adultery. It wasn't rape. And if she's suggesting it was, she's lying. I said no. I tried to wriggle out from underneath him, but he was holding my wrists. Not hard. I don't mean hard. Oh, he was supporting the weight of his body with his arms. It was very difficult to get free. And I was trying to think what I could do. How I could get out of it without anyone finding out. And then... Suddenly it was all over. He rolled off. It was very quick. Hey, good luck anyway. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Mr. Webb? I know you, don't I? Didn't you used to work in that pizza parlor? Part time, yeah. I'm a student. So, uh, well, what can I do for you? Um, Keith. Keith Rooney. What can I do for you then, Keith? Well, I came to see you a few weeks back about a part-time job. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, I've just seen your advertisements in the window. Oh, what a pity. Do you know if only you'd come earlier? It's gone. Yeah, well, that's the way it goes. Thanks, anyway. So the head waiter says, I am sorry, monsieur, there is a little problem in the kitchen. You see, hands that do dishes is as soft as Gervais with mild green fairy lip squid. <laughs> Hands that do dishes. Yeah, I know that, Blair. It's a bit old. Well, you might squeeze half a laugh, Jack. I grunt even. I'm not proud. Honest, that everybody knows that one. Keith! Hey, Keith! Hey, listen, Dad. Um, Keith says him and Mike and a crowd from the poly are going down to the Raz tonight. It's just a club. Can I go? Can I camel knit? Oh, go on, Dad, please. You never let me go anyway. No, that's because I know what you'd get up to if I did. I wouldn't. Oh, no? I'll leave you alone for one evening in Edinburgh, Jackie. One evening. It's not good talking to you. Hey, tell you what, special treat, if you promise to laugh, you can come with me and your mum on Bonnie night down to the Legion. The Legion? Well, it's a club, innit? What more do you want? It's uh, got a bar, it's got a disco. Oh, I yeah. What is it? You play the Gay Gordons? Well, come down with me and your mother. You'll be able to see for yourself what kind of disco it is, won't you? Yeah, well, I'll think about it. Hey, don't do me any favours, madam. Hey, well, listen, can I bring someone else then? Like who? Like Casey Rogers and the mate. Aye. Of course, I'm going to need all the help I can get, aren't I? Yeah. Mind you, I'll have to get some Laugh Now cards printed if they're coming. Hey, Barry, you keep sweeping, Cinders. You're doing a good job. Barry, ha. Glad I caught you. Any more thoughts? About what, Ron? Well, you know, you said you'd get back to me, didn't you? Did I? Yeah, about the end unit. Oh, yeah, you want to rent it, do you? Yeah, I was thinking about turning into a news agent, you know. Right, well, I can't see any problem. As long as you come up with a deposit, you know, six months' rent. 
the rent will be the same as what you got in the trading post now. No chance of a deal? Well, I'd like to, Ron, with you being my first tenant and all that. But the thing is, you see, it's two separate units, so it's two separate rents. Take it or leave it. All right, I'll have to talk to Dee Dee about it. All right, great. Well, uh, I've got things to do. Do I uh, pay the deposit to you or Max Farnham? To Max. Hi, right, Paddy. Doing a spot of wheeling and dealing. Spot of business, actually, Telly. You wouldn't believe it, would you, Degs? But I knew this go at Ed Tycoon when he was an innocent little five-year-old. Yeah, well, the only go at Ed Tycoon around here now is on Dixon. He's just been on to me about expanding into the end unit. Anyway, I've got a meeting to go to, so uh, I'll probably see you around, eh? Yeah, you probably will. I'm not going anywhere. You know, it's a pity about that end unit. It's just what we could do with Make an ideal charity shop for the cattle. You want that end unit for a charity shop? Yo. What I want and what I can afford are two separate things. <laughs> I believe you have to pay rent on shops, don't you? Well, do you want it or not? Yeah, of course I want it. You know what I mean? Well, leave it to me then. Yeah, I've got no money. I haven't even got a job, have I? I just said leave it to me, OK. It wasn't like some stranger attacking you with a knife. It, it wasn't about screaming for help. So, what, you're saying it's only proper rape if there's lots of violence and he uses a knife? He invaded me. He invaded me, my body, and... All right, maybe I led him on to believe that that's what I wanted, but I didn't want it, and I told him I didn't want it, and he still didn't stop. So are you waiting for me or what? As a matter of fact, I am. My mate Derek reckons that that end unit would make a good charity shop for that Cafford lot he works for. Cafford, eh? And I suppose you want me to work you the deal out on the rent? Yeah, I want it rent free. That doesn't sound like a very good business proposition to me, sir. Oh, I don't know. Charity is a business these days, and anyway, it won't do you any harm. True. Might even do me a bit of good as well for a limited period. There you go, me mother mates for. I mean, I woke up this morning and thought, what bit of good could I do my mate Barry today, eh? All right, then. You can tell your mate Derek that he can have the end unit till Christmas. I'll tell Ron, though. Tell him not to say nothing, OK? Oh, you know me, I'm good at keeping secrets. Don't push your luck, eh, Terry? <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. I told you they couldn't keep him. God, you're all right. Ma'am, we're releasing your son on police bail, Mrs. Harrison, pending further inquiries. What does that mean? Well, it means that if, after further inquiries, we decide there's a case to answer, Peter will be asked to report here to be formally charged, and in due course, he'll appear before magistrates. Look, uh, do the press have to be informed about this? No, no, don't worry. It's nothing more than an allegation at the moment, her word against his. There are some bail conditions, though. Peter mustn't change his address without informing us, and he's to have absolutely no contact with Mrs. Corkhill. I don't think there'll be any danger of that, do you? Oh, where's that card Tony gave us? Oh, I've got it somewhere. Where is it? <laughs> Excuse me, love. I'd better put it up. Well, God knows what he's advertising for. He's probably hiring himself out by the hour to drive people mad. <laughs> oh. Yeah. He wants to sell his Mega Drive, his computer game. What do you mean, sell it? I don't know for his birthdays only had it a couple of months. He's asking 60 quid for it. I got him Nintendo for Christmas, this Mega Drive for his birthday. I sweated blood to get him all his computer stuff. I expect he wants to get Super Thingy, Nintendo. That's what my sister's lads are into. Well, Super Nintendo, the little beggar to the wall. Well, it's a bit bloody much, day, isn't it? I mean, why doesn't he just come round and kick me in the teeth while he's at it? I find it very hurtful, to be honest, you know. That was a present, that. Obviously, it didn't mean that much to him, did it? Well, I'll go and have a word with him. It looks like he's going to sell the entire contents of his rooms by this. Yeah, and hey, tell him he's lucky that it's you that's having a way with him and not me. Do you know what? If I had my way, I'd burn every flame of computer game in England. We're not raising kids anymore. We're raising a whole generation of VDUs. Just come to say goodbye. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll, uh, I'll go and check upstairs.
All right, Mick. All right, Taz. Here you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. It's all fixed. What is it? The shop. You've got it rent-free till Christmas, but don't say anything to Ron, not yet. I'm going to say that again. You've got the shop rent-free till Christmas. How do you manage that? Well, let's say you owed me a favour. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Well, don't be too grateful because Barry isn't making any sacrifices. Well, thank you. Thank you, Terry. Thanks. Look, well, seeing as you're doing people favours, Tez, uh, do you fancy looking after this place for us till Ellis gets back? I've got to take the kids to the dentist. Er, uh, no, I better not, Mick, because, well, you know, when I was on it last time, I was half cut, wasn't I? And I'd end up burning it down on you, honest. Oh, well, back to plan A then. There you go. Call again, won't you? Hey, Mr. Webb? Yes, love? Can I ask you something? A bit too soon for a pay rise, love. Try again in six months. No, I just wanted to ask to be friend Keith, get the job. Oh, he's a friend of yours, is he? Oh, well, sort of, yeah. I used to go out with him until my dad started kicking off. He said old fashioned old things like that, my dad. What, about you going out with lads, like? Well, yeah, and about some being black and everything. So, did you get it, then? Well, I'm afraid not. I'd already offered the job to uh, Leanne, what's her name? Uh, Leanne Powell. Oh, well, I thought you wanted the lad to do it. Well, I did, yeah. I would have preferred one, but that's how it goes. Still, I don't want you girls accusing me of sexism now, do I? So, uh, when's Leanne starting, then? Pardon? I said, when, when's Leanne starting? Oh, uh, I haven't sorted out a starting date yet. I tell you what I wanted to ask you, Jackie. You live quite close to that fellow that runs the pizza parlour, don't you? Who you mean, Mick? Yeah. You don't know what number he lives at, do you? Eh, I don't know. What way does the number run go? It's a close, so it'll either be clockwise or anti-clockwise, won't it? Right. Yeah. See you later, boys. I better get off, because the kids will probably be there already. I'll see ya. All right, right see ya. Well, why did you want to know, anyway? Well, it's nothing. Look, um, look, I've just got to nip out for a minute. You'll be all right on your own, won't you? Yeah. Yeah, it'll only be ten minutes. Ron. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ron, yeah, yeah. But he's at the shop. Oh, yeah, of course he is. Oh. I am going to learn everything that they've got to teach. And in a couple of years, we're going to have that business. Our business. And we're going to make a million. <laughs> what am I going to do with you? <sighs> well, well, everything I do, it's for you, you know. You know that, don't you? Everything. I'd be happy with just you and the movie. Yeah, I know you would. But you deserve more than that, don't you? You deserve the loss. more than just goodbye for a couple of weeks. <laughs> Come on, love, sit down a sec. <laughs> Gonna lose him again, you know, Ron. No, you're not. Yes, I am. He's such a stupid man. <laughs> it's all dreams. It's like... <sighs> it's like having another kid to look after. <laughs> this great big kid who's got him with the wrong company again. It's a crust. Well, it's the world he knows. Clubs, 
booze and gambling. It's his world. She's not clever enough for it, Rolly. Never has been. Just, just felt like a very final sort of goodbye. He'll be back. Oh no. I know we will. I just don't know if the Jimmy that'll come back will be the Jimmy I've just said goodbye to. Right. I want the truth. I want to know what's going on. You know what's going on. All I know is that Diana Corkill has accused you of rape. It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Thank you, Mum. Yes, all right, all right. But we need to know what's happening. We need to know where we stand. What made her go to the police, for God's sake? She obviously thinks she's got some grounds for this allegation. <sighs> she's trying to cover her tracks. She's trying to use me to save her marriage. Oh, Peter, it's all right. It's OK. Get him a drink, John. What do you mean, she's using you to save her marriage? It's all lies. I didn't do it, Mum, not what she said. Of course you didn't. All right. All right, let's just take it slowly. Are you saying she's lying? Yes. So what happened? I went to that party down yeah, at the Farnham's. She was there. We started kissing. Hang on a minute. You and Diana Corkill started kissing? Yeah. Oh my God, I need a drink. She's a married woman. Yes. I know she's a married woman. And OK, it was stupid. I know it was stupid, but these things happen, Dad. No, they don't. Oh, no, they don't. Not unless you want them to happen. OK, so maybe I wanted it to happen. Both of us did. And then afterwards, she got all upset over Rod. Afterwards, huh? After what? What do you think? What? You had sex with her? Peter. Oh, get real, Mum. These things happen. They happen all the time. And then 24 hours later, after refusing point blank to speak to me, she suddenly accuses me of rape. 24 hours later. Now, what does that look like to you? It looks like you don't know the meaning of self-control. I don't think you've got the right to lecture me on self-control, Dad. Arrogant little... You lecherous little bastard! Mum! A married woman! For God's dad. sake! You had sex with a married woman! Why do you keep your brains in your trousers? Mom. I could kill you for this! I could kill him for this. This isn't going to help. It helps me. I didn't rape her. I swear to you, it wasn't rape. How many times have I got to say it before anyone believes me? Hot and heavy in Brookside there. And did you notice on the petrol forecourt, the prices were 45p a litre? That's vintage Brookside for you. It'll be back at 2.10 tomorrow. This afternoon at 4.30 in Mystic Challenge, the guest is posh rogue Jamie Blandford. Now, if you were watching earlier, you would have seen us talking about the newspaper headlines today, still uh, covered with the stories of the floods. But we want to know your stories, not if you've been stuck on motorways or roads, but if your home has been affected, if you've lost things of sentimental value, please phone us or email us, and the address and number are on your screen right now. And if you want to get your hands on one of these gorgeous beasts, it is a living hand.